Anyway, let's get started here. Acts chapter 15. Father, bless our uh, lesson today and uh, um, the wisdom that only you're able to give us now, Father, that it would come from on high, Father, not from our own hearts and minds, but from the mind and heart of God. Now, in Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. All right, uh, false doctrine and the and heresy had entered the church early on. And uh, here we are in uh, Acts chapter 15. And uh, we're in verse 2. And uh, uh, false doctrine, it, it's, it's got to be dealt with quickly. Acts 20. If we remember what is in Acts 20, we did go over these verses. Acts 20 is what greatest wool shall uh, come into the church, not sparing the flock, and then uh, those that deceit the, uh, draw disciples after themselves, uh, th those that rise up from among us. It, it doesn't mean that these are lost people. These are people that, uh, uh, and I liken it unto streaming today, is uh, if you're online, uh, it, it's up to the point <clears throat> where it was actually openly discussed why even have a missionary when you could just have a screen over it in the jungle and live stream a church service. It, it, it gets to that point, and so eventually it'll be uh, who's going to run that live streaming. And there'll be one big screen, and, and who's going to be on it? That's a question. The Antichrist. The Antichrist. Mm -hmm. and it, 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 it could eventually get there. Uh, uh, if we go to Romans 16, let's look at these. We already quoted Acts 20. Uh, certain men crept in unawares, Jude chapter 3, uh, Jude verse 3, I mean. Uh, Romans uh, 16, verse 17. We'll just read the verse. I beseech you, mark them, brethren, which, mark them which cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid, avoid them. Uh, what is the very first thing uh, that is... All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for what? The very first thing. I mean, we named off all of them, or the bulk of them, uh, before we got to the main one. And the first one's doctrine. Pardon? Reproof. Yeah, that for reproof, uh, rebuke, uh, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, uh, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So, but doctrine is the uh, first and foremost that is given. All right, these in 2 Timothy, uh, turn there quickly. 2 Timothy 3, about perilous, the last days perilous times are coming. Verses 13 and 14, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And then 2 uh, Timothy Timothy 4, 3, and 4. Uh, the, the, they won't endure sound doctrine, verse 3. Uh, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, turning, turning away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Unto fables. All right. Uh, Titus chapter 1. And it's these personal letters are directed toward the, the title. Uh, Paul wrote that, wrote that to Timothy personally. Titus is written to Titus personally. Now I would bring up these verses like this to people and they say, well that's for Titus. Well that's for Timothy. Which technically is true, but if you don't apply it to your own life, then uh, uh, I, I, think, I think I brought up I think I brought it up. I said, uh, uh, Titus is to be a, uh, a lover of hospitality. And they and, uh, said, well, that's for the preacher. And passed it off. Well, uh, that is true. I, I wasn't going to deny it. And I would say, uh, we're going to preach on gifted children tonight. And the character of a gifted child. And uh, you'll, you'll see where that all fits. But it is a, uh, 
That is true, and I believe that that is one of the gifts, and, and not all Christians have that gift. But if the preacher doesn't have that gift, he needs to go, he, he needs to go dig ditches or something. Be an engraver, you know. Do, do, you got to do something else. It, if you're not a lover of it, a lover of it, and it does say, state that. Yeah, verse 9. Uh, Titus 1, look at verse 8. We're told to go to verse 9 and 11. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, so we're just holy tempered. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught. And he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convince the gainsayers. When we say then by sound doctrine, <clears throat> basically speaking, thus saith the Lord. And then, so their argument is with whom? The argument is with, not with the preacher, not, not with this or that. Their argument is with the Bible and, and the God of the Bible. That's who their argument is. is. And, and I don't mean uh, quoting verses out of context to make them mean something that they don't mean, but by sound doctrine. And it needs to be dealt with uh, quickly. For there are many unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, of what was in the first century church and that had infiltrated the church because they're coming out of that. And that's what the Jews, the, the first ones getting saved were Jewish, and this is their tradition, and this is what they've been brought up with and taught. And it is hard to break that. It's very, very hard to break that. Uh, bitter clingers, you know, they cling on. Uh, John, 2 John uh, 10, if we turn there. I put these in order so that we would stay in an order. 2 John 10, verse 10. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, that of Diotrephes, which wanted to have the preeminence, prating against us with malicious words and not content therewith. Neither, neither doth himself receive the brethren and forbid them that would and causeth them, casteth them out of the church. It, it that doesn't necessarily, he's preaching uh, false doctrine, but we assume he is. But it, 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 it creeps into the church. In Jude 3 and 4, it says they crept in unawares. Jude uh, 3 and 4. Behold, when I gave all diligence uh, to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me, it's common because God made so many common people, right? It was needful for me to write unto you to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I have uh, put on my side margin there, antinomianism. <coughs> Meaning, since we're saved by grace and, and, and uh, kept by grace, it doesn't matter how you live. And so you could uh, be very liberal and live like the devil. So it, it does and can creep in. It, it creeps in. Um, uh, I was, oh, I was going to say, uh, what, what is the number in Jude, how it runs? Anybody know what it runs? Anybody remember that when we do uh, when we do uh, uh, what do we do when we oh survey when we do survey when we do a Bible survey what is the number that runs through Jude it's it's less than five it runs in threes yes do you have that written in your Bible or no but you remember that you do remember that. It runs in threes. Uh, it, it just does. It outlines that way. Just, just to jog your memory and, and keep that in your head. It does run that way. Now, if good work saves, the, the idea here is, we brought this up last week, we skipped to this point. Ask yourself, which, how many of them and which ones save? Which ones? You know, people select the ones they want in, in which to uh, be saved. Look at verse 1. 
of Acts 15. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and say, said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. All right, these are certain men. Uh, if we read what's down here, uh, it came down from Judea. They taught. They are uh, scribes, Pharisees, Matthew 23. It's where he says, uh, uh, they, they say, but do not. They, they tell you what to do, but they don't do what they say they're going to do. We'll go to Matthew 23. And then false apostles and ministers, they appear as angels of light, 2 Corinthians 11. But notice that these are teachers, they actually talk. And that's Acts 15, verse 1. But certain men. men. Uh, let's go back to uh, Matthew 23. want to uh, look at some of these groups. Uh, <clears throat> Matthew 23, then spake Jesus to the multitude, to the disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, you know, when we, when we see this, they're entrenched in there. And so uh, when, we, when we, let's look at it carnally, or uh, not, not religiously, but carnally, and uh, about our government. Our, our, our government, the United States of America, they're, they're lately been calling this, what, what state? The deep state, they're, they're entrenched in there. It's bit, well, I always said right from the get-go, they're not gonna want this Trump guy because he's not gonna, he doesn't want business as usual and the, those, even the blue dogs, the Republicans, they want business as usual. So it doesn't matter who's elected, uh, it's usually always about the what? Yeah, all it is is, well, instead of getting in this line, they're gonna get in that line. And they want to just keep the gravy train going. Now, if you're in a communist country, if there's this thin crust at the top, they're always in power. And everybody else is underneath that. It's just the way it is. Listen, what is the, the ideal government? Ah, uh, I didn't think of that. A theocracy, but that, it, it, it is plurality where there's more than one, other than if you were to say just the high priest, well then you got the high priest. But beyond that, get rid of that. The monk. A what? The monk. No, that's not the ideal government. You know, the Republicans, you know, half, half the country's whack. But they gotta be in one party or the other. And they're just whacked out. Monarchy. A monarchy is the better, best kind of government. But why, why doesn't it work? Because the one in charge is not perfect, but if you have a good monarch, and there there are good monarchs that sincerely want to do right, and that tends to then uh, the people rejoice, and uh, and it's not business as usual, where they're actually helping people. So anyway, you have these scribes and Pharisees; they're 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 the head guys. You got uh, in, in in Christianity here. You got Second Corinthians eleven. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 through 15, for such are false apostles, apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is of no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now these apostles, so-called, so showed up in the first century <coughs> church, in the book of Revelation when he's preaching to the churches, the seven churches, and, and they claim to be apostles, and he said, are not apostles. They had to see the risen Christ, they had to be able to perform these miracles, they, and they can't do that. They cannot do that. And, and so the apostolic succession is then the Pope, he is supposed to be the apostle, that this is being passed down to him, and he can't do it either. And, and they want to cling on to that. And they and obviously it is something that is false. Okay, uh, <clears throat> if we go to uh, 
uh, in Acts 15.1, how this progressed. It says, it, as far as, as, as this progression or degression, notice in verse 1 of Acts 15, it is called the manner of Moses. In Luke 2, in Luke 2, you go back there, it is called the law of Moses, Luke 2, 22. And when the days of her purification were according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So it was the law, it was, it was still to be practiced there, it was, it was to be done. Then it, it degresses into what is called in Acts 6, now, the Lord is uh, resurrected, ascended, Acts chapter 6, verse 14. It degresses, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. So it now turns us into the customs of Moses. And then finally, by Acts 15, uh, we're talking Acts 15 is 45 A.D., Acts 6. 33, so, you know, a dozen years go by, it degresses now to the manner of Moses and so on. It just, it gets more and more perverted. Anyway, we're saved by grace, folks, but by, not by keeping the law. It's over. It is over. All right, it's heresy. It brings dissension and disputation. Verse 2, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, it brings dissension and disputing. Uh, what do we call that in, in Congress? Normal. Ah, yeah, normal. Well, they want, uh, they, they claim the general public doesn't want that. And so they don't want it to be, I want to say it right, bipartisan? Partisan. <coughs> they, wait a minute. They want it to be uh, they, bipartisan is when both sides agree. Bipartisan. Is when right. They want it to be <coughs> nonpartisan. Wait a minute. Bipartisan or bipartisan? Well, nonpartisan and bipartisan is practically the same definition. It's when the Republicans submit to the Democrats. <laughs> wait, wait. Exactly. The other side doesn't. Now, folks, I'm not saying that one side is always right and the other side is always wrong. But one side is 90% of the time right and the other side is 110% <laughs> wrong. And I, I always still say is we want them to argue and fight. We want them to argue and fight. Mm -hmm. At least I do. Because one side is definitely wrong. If, if, if they're agreeing with... And, and I just will just pick one, abortion. They're wrong, we're right. <clears throat> and you don't make a deal with the devil. So here, it, 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 when, when false doctrine comes in, it creates an argument. And, uh, but Paul and Barnabas were the ones doing the disputing. They were the ones doing the disputing, and it has to be rooted out. Not the disp disputers, but they were disputing with those that were teaching false doctrine, and they had to be, and must be rooted out. There is, there is a right and a wrong, and it must be, it must be discussed openly. But Ephesians 4, what's the main thrust of Ephesians 4? It's the U word. Unity. It's all about unity. God desires there to be ultimately unity. There must be unity about these things. And so that is, a, that, that is when there is unity, is there peace or turmoil? There's peace. God wants peace in your life. But folks, uh, when, when, there, when there's disunity, whatever's causing that, that means that let's, let's say there's disunity over the Bible issue. You know? Well, I don't rifle through everybody's purses and see what, what you're carrying in here. 
But I can guarantee you this, no one's going to be preaching unless it's from the King James Bible. And you're never going to go correct and say this is a better word. It, that just that happened once openly here. And I, I stopped it right there. We, we stopped it on a Johnny on the spot. Johnny on the spot. All right, so a heresy, it does bring dissension and disputation. Uh, the truth is this, is that it brings salvation, both to Jew and Gentile, by grace, and not by works. And that brings, and the what that produces in verse 3, it causes great joy unto all the brethren. <clears throat> Being brought on their way by the church, verse 3, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. It brings a, a general joy to the people. It brings, it brings that. All right, verse 5. Uh, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So, now I know I brought up other verses when we said certain men, 2 Corinthians 11, I, I'm not saying those people were saved, but they're lost. Matthew 23, those scribes and Pharisees, when, when Jesus is chewing them out, those are lost people, they're not saved people. But here, the, the idea here is they, they have some bad doctrine here. It doesn't mean that they were lost. It doesn't mean that, that they were lost. That it shows that believers can take part in heresy. They can get caught up in, into that. All right? And it was needful to circumcise. Those who feel they could lose their salvation, therefore it's needful to circumcise to keep the law of Moses. They feel, listen, we're not saved by, we're not saved by works and we're not kept by works. It's not the maintenance, we call that the maintenance program, after you've got to maintain this, by, by doing some performance to prove your salvation. Uh, they, they felt they could lose their salvation. Uh, Pastor Thompson would state that one of the main holdups or uh, uh, problems that give uh, Christians uh, a sensation of uneasiness or uncertainty is that they feel that they could lose their salvation. That they, you know, they're, they're, it causes uncertainty. They're, it's You need to be confident in your salvation. And so we liken it unto a trophy. Now this is just an illustration. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a marriage. You get married. A year later, you may not feel like you're married. You don't feel the same. But we don't go on feelings. We go on fact. You still have this marriage certificate. Where's the, by the way, where's the real marriage certificate? Oh, I don't mean that one. Uh, currently speaking. Where's the real marriage certificate? Pardon? It's down at the courthouse. Where's your bat where, where are your baptism? Where is your birth certificate? At the courthouse. Why is it down there? Because of the incompetence of the general public. What would you do with your birth certificate? You're going to lose it. What will you do with your marriage certificate? You're, you're going to lose it. It got damaged in a fire. It got burned. It got watered. It, it's going to be gone. So you can, you can get a copy of it. But you can't get the original. And it's just because of the incompetence of... Why did those kids get killed? Those 19 kids get killed down there in Florida. The FBI had all the evidence they needed. Because they're just like you and me and any other group of people. They're just as incompetent as the next group. Mm -hmm. They're just as incompetent. They decided, well, I'll have another cup of coffee and I'm gone. And somebody didn't follow up on what they were supposed to do. These aren't some elite group. You know, they're just as incompetent. I don't know how I got up on that one. <laughs> but 
they, they feel, they don't feel safe. And because of that, then they have to, they have to do that. They, they need to, you know, they, they need to do something in order to feel safe. It is a, it's a big stumbling block to not feel safe. That, boy, am I safe? Am I really safe? And there are people that go through life like that. It's, it's, like, a, uh, it's, it's like a marriage. Even though you don't, may not feel married, you're still married. It says you are. It's like a trophy. We say it's like a trophy. Well, I did win the contest, but boy, I don't feel like it. The trophy still sits on the man. There, I, there it is, proof. Proof. Is, uh, you, you've got to get beyond that and have the confidence of, of, of your salvation. Verse 6, the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. It is the, real, the second real church meeting. The first was the uh, uh, kabuffle that they had with the feeding of the saints physically with this food that one group was preferred before another. And, uh, and that does take place in churches. Uh, we've always been told, uh, now this, is, this would be in class, and, and you may feel that way. You may feel that way, and because of that feeling, it, it, it can <coughs> cause problems. Is the, is the pastor to have any, any uh, preference, one above another, in a church? The answer is no. But if he does, it, 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 it could come out. The only one I should prefer above everybody else in, the, in this room would be my wife. But, and, and that, can, that, that kind of stuff can occur. That, that kind of stuff can occur. Is that uh, in, in this Act 6, that one group felt more privileged than the next and more uh, uh, was paid more or better attention to than another group. And, so, and they had a meeting about it. <clears throat> and that was not so much a doctrinal meeting, it was a physical meeting. The carnal meeting, where this one is is a doctrinal meeting. All right, the apostles and elders first came together, and then the entire church later, verses twenty two and twenty three. Then it pleased then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church, with the whole church. The idea is uh, when they do this politically. And, well, we want to do something. They send out, a, a, the, the catchphrase is that they send out a trial balloon and see what the opinion, basically they're putting their finger up to the wind and seeing which way the wind blows. Folks, in the church you shouldn't put your finger up to see which way the wind is blowing. Uh, doctrinally speaking, it, 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 since it's, if it's doctrinally sound, we, we, pre, we discuss this openly with a few people to get them all on board so that there can be support in this. It's not to see, well, which way does the church want to go? And we just go with the flow. Well, well, we'll use the NIV this week and we'll use the RSV the next week. You know, it, it doesn't go like that. It is it is to get everybody on board, it's especially in, the goal is to get the entire church on board so that, uh, that they'll end disunity amongst the believers. All right? Peter's discourse. Uh, he, is, he does give a, a sermon here. Uh, when, verse 7. When there had been much disputing. So there, there's a, a lot of arguing going on here. Now, what nationality are these people? They're Jews. Now, if you personally know Jews, <coughs> I don't know what makes them like that, but they're very forward. They're, they're not one to hold back. Uh, we, I had a, uh, we, we used to engrave golf clubs. I engraved golf clubs for a, a Jew that was, worked for another Jew that I knew pretty well. And he was the, oh, he worked for Lester. Lester was a Jew. Here locally, the uh, die casting outfit. And they die cast aluminum die cast parts, uh, a lot of automotive and such. Well, his this worker uh, worked there. He was a Jew. He was a salesman, and he wanted to develop these golf clubs. 
And he, he brought them in, and they were casting the, the heads of these clubs, and, you know, the gluing on sticks. I don't know. It wasn't wooden sticks. Graphite, whatever the, whatever the sticks were today, the modern ones. But I had to engrave on the uh, club. I forget what we engraved on there. We engraved something, and he said, look at this club. It's the best club out there. It's, and I just, you know, I wasn't going to argue. It's, he, he, he built it. He designed it. He probably didn't pour the aluminum or uh, the titanium, whatever it was made out of. I don't know what it was made out of. He didn't pour it, but I had to engrave it. And we, he, these were still prototypes, I think, and they were unmarked. If you go to a store and you buy a club, it's just marked with logos and Anybody else that's cashing in on it's got all kinds of marks on it. He, he wanted a clean club, nothing on the club. And whatever marking we put on, I forget what it was or why it was. He go, my brother was still with me. So he goes over to my brother and he goes up to the machine that my brother's working at, and working at, and he said, now look at this club. It's the best cl golf club that's made. And my, my brother made the mistake of saying, well, my brother, and he didn't say it mean, he said, well, that's a matter of opinion. That guy blew right up. I mean, he just, he got real angry. He said, no, no one asked you. And, he, and on and on. I mean, he just told my brother right off. I just sat there and listened. He told my brother off. But it, it is, it's the way they do. They're much disputing. And so they're not afraid to, to talk back and forth. But, uh, uh, and this was this issue over the circumcision. So uh, Peter rose up, said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. In other words, that was God's will. God's will. Verse 8, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So the witness wasn't necessarily of men. The witness was from the Holy Spirit. So, it, and the Holy Spirit was God's witness here. God's witness, verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. God's washing, the washing, when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, they get saved, their, their heart is washed clean. God's washing. All right, God's washing. All right, in uh, verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God and put a, a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? God's way was, is, not, is, is not by works, but by grace. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved even as they. If God's way is grace and God's work, is verse 11, that God does the work, is the grace of the, uh, the grace of the Lord, that through Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross is the, is the means of salvation. So uh, that's his discourse. He just systematically, by the way, when you sing a hymn in, in the hymnal, systematically, when, when these songwriters write hymns, now I don't know what they do in these new hymns, but if you read these old hymns while we're singing, if you're paying attention to the words, or generally if I'm playing the music, I'm not paying attention to the words. But systematically, you'll see that preached out in a song. I was lost, verse 1. Verse 2, I got saved. Verse 3, uh, I am now serving. Verse 4, I am heaven bound. Verse 5, I will be there. When it, you see, it's a systematic progression in, in, in these songs as it goes. And this is a systematic progression in the preaching. And it systematically plots along and uses logic where people can get it. Okay, legalism is not a... Is, is not a uh, they will call, let's say, a dress code for, for women. We, we don't preach on that stuff here, folks. We don't preach on that because younger people, have, you know, first of all, I don't feel led to do that with older people, for crying out loud. For me to be telling an older woman, I mean, an older woman, what's that young guy trying to do to me? You know, girls can look to the, and, and 
girls are more conscious of this than guys. Girls look to the left and look to the right and see what's going on and they get with the program within two weeks. They can figure it out. And uh, we, we've never had a problem. And, and if those that say that, uh, churches that say that if you're a legalist, that's not, that legalism is adding anything to your salvation. So when we preach or do anything like that, we're not saying that adds to your salvation. We do it because we are saved, not to be saved. But this is a, a good little phrase. Legalism is do and live. You must do in order to be saved. Grace is live and do. Grace means we, we get saved, and because of that, now we do and serve. All right? The issue comparing one verse 1 to verse 11 is the contrast between works and faith. Verse 1 is, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they so that is the issue, comparing that verse 1 to verse 11, between works and faith. All right? Uh, verse 12. Notice that verse 12 stands alone. And I don't know if I... I, I probably have a, an outline for this whole thing. Uh, if we go, yeah, verse, uh, the way, the why, the witness. Verse 12 is now the witness. There's going to be an actual witness that is given. Paul Barnabas stand up and now the, the Holy Spirit gave witness. Now we have people that are out in the field. Paul Barnabas, they're going to give their witness, the witness. Uh, in verse 12, Peter states, states it in verse 6 through 11. He is he is telling the story, and Paul and Barnabas testify to having experienced, experienced the story, testifying. The why is stated by Peter, verses 6 through 11. The witness stated by Barnabas and Paul, verse 12. And all the multitude kept silent and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Not amongst the Jews, but amongst the Gentiles. So they give this witness. And then this third one that is witnessing is, uh, a, is James. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. He goes then to the word. Notice verse 15. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. So he goes to the <clears throat> word of God to back up and justify all of, all of what is taking place. Those are the words. In other words, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Not, not some stories and what the preacher <clears throat> feels or thinks. It, that, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. And we will pick this up here uh, next week. We're, we're running over. We'll pick it up here at uh, verse 13 with James and start here next week. And we'll get ready here for preaching. Father, bless now the preaching to follow. All for the sake of Jesus. May the church be truly edified today. In Christ's name, amen.